What's up, YouTube? Mike here with another episode of Talk to the Mic, and I've got a returning guest today, Bernard Robichaud. Thanks for being back on the show, bro. Thanks very much for having me, Mike. Always a pleasure, buddy. So, uh, so what's new? How's everything with you been? Well, uh, you know, Carmel's starting to open up, so, um, you know, it's, it's getting there. Uh, you can eat in restaurants now, so that's kind of cool. Um, uh, still got the social distancing thing and, you know, uh, some places, uh, of course are still, you're still dealing with the face mask once, when you go in, like, uh, uh, you know, like the grocery stores and, and you know, those places, pe people that are asking you to wear a mask, you have to wear a mask. So, you know, it, it is what it is. So I try to, you know, get it, get in and get out as soon as I can. Cause I, I, I'm not sure that those masks are doing you any good. I, I think when they first started this, the only mask Fauci was saying would work was the N95 mask that they were all in an uproar about. And then, you know, of course, there's other masks that they're wearing in the hospitals, you know, and they had to change them. Uh, you know, they would change them normally, I would think. But, uh, you know, the stuff, you know, when you're in a crowded place, I mean, those masks are just trapping your stuff and everybody else that's around you so it's I think that's if true people, i think if people were uh looking at the science behind uh, how a virus works you know um uh you know my 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 gut feeling is that if it was a real serious virus and i'm not saying this is not a serious virus i'm not saying that they didn't latch on it a little bit sooner but I, when i look at the you know, some of the statistics and things, uh, uh, I think there'd be a lot more people, um, it, it wouldn't be just selective to, uh, people with, um, um, you know, compromised immune systems. Uh, I think a real pandemic would affect everybody, um, in my opinion, um, cause a million people globally is nothing like 50 million people globally like uh the spanish flu so um exactly so anyway it, you know it is what it is man i'm not in the uh, position to of power to kind of like uh, make any kind of changes and uh, i think governments will do what they do until people kind of stand up and do what they need to in order to change um what's going on so you know much the same as what's happening with the blm movement right now and um although i i like to think that all lives matter and so you know not just the black lives so i i think it's just uh i think if we were i i don't see just black people out there um protesting i see every nationality out there protesting so i I, I like to think that it was uh, uh, more about a group effort and not just, you know, black lives, because I, I don't think there's any one life that uh, doesn't matter. So uh, and I think that's my gut on that one, you know. That's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good point. Like, so it's how, how, how have the, uh, the protests has been going on? Have they been, have they been pretty quiet and peaceful where you are or, there, or has there been some rioting and yeah, some stuff pretty, going on? Yeah, pretty quiet in uh, in Carmel. Um, you know, for the most part, there's not really, it's not really anything going on here. It's the bigger centers, of course. I mean, there's not really a huge population here. Um, I know that they did. Uh, there was a petition uh, sent in, uh, uh, you know, for them to allow uh, protests to happen in Carmel by the sea, and they squash that just because somebody also had said you know let's make sure that those people in carmel feel the wrath and you know uh you know pillage and loot they saw is something about pillaging and looting the the carmel by the sea area and i thought eh. and so the uh police department denied and the city council denied the protest and you know rightfully so i mean it's not about the looting and, and all that. That doesn't have anything to do with the peaceful protests, in my opinion. I mean, I don't, that's really yeah, just that's sure. it's really just taken away from everybody that's trying to get out from lockdown for the last three months and getting back to work and um, and preventing them from doing preventing many from doing so. And it's already you know twenty million people without work. So I mean, it's it's pretty it's kind of a sad thing. I, granted, I'm sure that some of these businesses have 
you know, insurances and stuff like that to protect them. And, and you know, I, I get it, but uh, you still got more time waiting for insurance companies to to be there for you and cover you. And, and you know, then you've got, you know, construction. And I mean, you know, you're, you're a year down the road in some cases, I'm sure, before you can actually move forward. So if there's anything left of the building at all, you know, so uh, kind yeah. of a sad Sad situation, uh, you know, the North America seems to be in. Uh, I know it's not easy in uh, in Montreal either, where, where you guys are. So, uh, you know, uh, I guess all we can do is just kind of like uh, try to keep busy, stay healthy and, um, and you know, uh, move forward from there, you know. As with every, uh, with every kind of major, um, you know, uh, whether it's 9-11 or whether it's a, a pandemic or whatever it is, every time something like this happens, or, you know, there's always going to be um, businesses and people that are going to lose their jobs and or their businesses. And, you know, what comes out of that fire is kind of like the phoenix, you know, comes rising up to the top and, you know, other people will take uh, advantage of that and, uh, you know, start businesses. And, you know, uh, so, it, you know, it's, it's a bit cyclical and it's, but it's, it's sad at the same time, but it's kind of the way it works, you know, um, so, I mean, all we can do is hope for those, uh, hope for those ones that are losing their jobs and, uh, and not getting back to work that, uh, that they recover quickly and they're able to, um, you know, make sure that they're, families and themselves are taken care of because that's, that's, you know, it's not an easy thing to have that burden over top of you. Oh yeah, I know. And like I said, I, it, things will get better. It'll just take time. As long as people like, you know, follow like the rules and follow everything else, things will get better. So. Yeah. I, I have no doubt, man. I have a lot of faith in uh, humanity. So uh, I think it, uh, you know, for sure that'll happen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good to hear that. So, what uh, have you done? Any new, any new acting? Any new, any new show? Well, everything, series? I know every, it's everything like from actor to SAG, SAG here in California has all been, you know, on hold until you know because of the COVID. Now, the um, Hollywood Reporter just announced that you know the uh, industry is opening up again here. Um, I so I got a, I'm involved in a. I did, uh, I did season three, um, you know, at least one episode right now of the new animated series for Trailer Park Boys. Okay. Uh, I think uh, a couple of weeks ago, a week and a half or so ago, I, uh, I, uh, I um, did that in San Jose. And then um, I'm involved with a producer in Los Angeles for maybe another three possibly four projects one amazon prime one hbo series they're both on hold right now because uh, they're major productions uh, eight to ten episodes each um and then a, a web series through the same producer and i know that that's going to happen um it's kind of a sci-fi thing um there's all we're doing right now she wants to do right now is the trailer for it because she's presented at a con um mm -hmm. uh in the near future so um yeah so there's those things are happening for sure um, um but you know when you know they're all aside from the web series um you know and what's happening with that um when the other two when the other ones will uh, We'll start pr uh, production again. Uh, I have no idea. So that's that's not really in my. Yeah, I'm just happy that I'm, I'm you know, uh, involved in stuff. Those those things are all, I think, uh, mentioned on IMDb. <clears throat> I think she's put them all on there, or at least uh, two of them. There's another one, too, that I should the other that one of them is. I know she's got Jamie Foxx and um, Hillary Swank involved in it. Um, so, um, myself and, uh, you know, some other actors that are a actor, a listeners out of, uh, out of Los Angeles. So, you know, that's kind of exciting. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm happy to be involved in that. Yeah. And then like I said, like, well, trailer park boys season two, the animated series just came out. So you're in that too. Have yeah, you done more season two, <laughs> yeah. I think it came out last Friday or something. Yeah. 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 I was talking with. Mr. Finch today. I had interviewed Mr. Finch too, and he was telling me about it too. He was talking about it. So I already watched right. it. So 
it's a yeah. good series. I like. It. Um, yeah. My question to that is. I haven't uh, watched it. <laughs> oh, you haven't watched it? Okay. I, have, I, I haven't thought, it, watched it, man. Yeah, I do. I, you know, even you know, it'd just be weird to hear my voice and kind of in cartoon <laughs> style. I just just an, you know, it's just another one of those things for me. I just. Uh, you know, as long as people are happy with it and they like it, uh, you know, okay, that, I did my job. That's it's great. I'm happy with that. How do you like doing the uh, the voiceover stuff? Like, can you see yourself doing other movies or other productions doing a voiceover instead of being uh, the actual actor? Yeah, yeah I've got another uh, another producer uh, on the East Coast that just um, I just sent me a. They've been emailing, um, calling me back and forth there last week. I have to. Actually, have to call them again back tomorrow. Um, but they're they're involved in uh, an animated series. He's got a couple of animated series actually, but there's one in particular that he he wants me to uh, to read for. So uh, it's going through SAG as well. I think they're right now they're just uh, finalizing contractual stuff. So um, yeah, at this point, you know, I can't release any kind of like. Aside what's on been on IMDb, what they've attached my name to, I can't uh, unless it's on ID, IMDb. I can't really because I signed NDA uh, agreements for everything. So it's kind of a you know it's just the way the industry is working nowadays. As I'm sure you know. Yeah, you're stuck behind the pen and paper for that one. You can't say anything. So yeah, that's it, buddy. Well, you know, I mean, it's nice that I'm being uh, considered. It's nice that people are coming to me. That's uh, yeah, that's a. That's a whole new thing, you know, uh, without having to worry about auditioning so much. I mean, I mean, not that I'm not auditioning. Uh, I've had three or four of those probably in the last couple of months. So regardless of the COVID thing. So that's been kind of nice. Um, but, uh, you know, everything, like I said, nothing's been uh, discussed yet. There's a movie I uh, had a really good audition for uh, going to be shot in Winnipeg area okay uh, and then another csi um csi stuff uh that um producers asked me to uh, audition for it's pretty kind of a blanket kind of thing i was able to choose what audition piece i wanted and that was kind of nice so who knows what will happen again everything's kind of like just opening up so uh there's been nothing no discussion and i'm sure that my agents be in touch with me as soon as um, they've heard because they haven't heard anything about anything so um, I'm sure producers are just kind of sitting back and trying to get as much done as they possibly can before production hits and they're they're allowed to roll. So nice, nice. I've seen uh, I've seen your own cameo now. How uh, how's that working so far? Yeah, you know, uh, it's okay. I mean, you know, it's uh, kind of the same thing all the time uh, when it happens. Uh, you know, just a lot of people want you to wish them a happy birthday and tell them to fuck off you know they yeah i got work to do so i mean it's uh you know but uh for the, the you know they seem to be happy i mean uh, nobody's giving me a bad rating <laughs> no that's bad good. bad rating yet so that's been good so i guess they're getting what they uh what they want out of it yeah it's like saying, like, here, happy birthday, Mom. Cyrus just told you to fuck off, pretty much. It's yeah, like, oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, well, you'd be surprised. I've, I've actually done that. Uh, I've done some of those fuck offs for Mother's Day, too. So it's kind of we're stra a little strange for that. Got some, I uh, got a, a birthday and a Father's Day one coming up. Uh, I think tomorrow I got to do it. Um, I, I kind of usually wait until when I get one, I kind of wait and see if I get more <laughs> before the four days around. <laughs> You know, kind of, kind of try to do the two or three or whatever I got. You know, whatever it is, uh, try to do it all at once. So, uh, uh, yeah, no, it's uh, it's been okay, man. I mean, it's um, surprising. You know, I mean, I didn't really think that. You know, there would be that. Uh, there would be people, that, you know, wanting that. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that was a pleasant, a pleasant surprise. Yeah. Well, like last time you talked to me, you were telling me that you were getting people sending you emails to say, can you just like do it? Can I just get you to record the day? Fuck off. I've worked on it. Yeah, yeah. So I'm glad I joined the cameo thing because, you know, at least that stops that from happening. They're not asking me to do True. that. Um, 
but you know people lots of people have asked me to do just to tell them to fuck off without anything <laughs> else when i'm on facebook or twitter or something like that but you know again now through cameo i mean you can tell people to fuck off or like you know they can you can text them or something i think there's a a text thing through cameo now is where you actually tell them to fuck off or fuck off like a work to or safety you know whatever it is they want you to t- say um <laughs> you're like uh, you get a you get two or three lines or something like uh you know and it's like five dollars or something like that so you know oh, okay. you know it, it's it, i have not i haven't i haven't used it yet but i you know apparently that's that's a thing so <laughs> Interesting what people will come I think up with. Most eh? People would prefer to have the video as opposed to the, you know, uh, something that they would probably have to uh, take a camera shot of their. Of yeah, that's true. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Unless okay. it gives you the option to save, like save something, like it's got a picture of you on the side, it's got your words on the bottom or something. Oh, I don't know. Maybe. I mean, you know. I mean, uh, I'm on the other end of it, so I don't know what they're doing with it. That's true. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that's the case. I mean, yeah, like I said, I haven't had anybody uh, ask me that. I get most of that, like I said, on on social media. Every time somebody, uh, every time some space opens up on my profiles or something, uh, you know, my, you know, my, my new friend, <laughs> my new friends <laughs> want me to tell them to fuck off. So it's, it's a little strange, you know. It's not one of those things you want to do uh, r- right now with uh, with all the protesting and stuff. <laughs> it might yeah, be inappropriate. <laughs> not uh, not so be- apropos. <laughs> yeah, people are I mean, saying stuff. They mix yourself up in the wrong crowd. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, they, they they stick the phone up. Look, look, Cyrus is protesting with us. Let's let's not even go down that road. Somebody will be asking. So I think I think we'll I think we'll leave that one alone. Yeah, you'll be thinking every time now. I'd be like, I think that would be one of those ones that I say, no, nah, I'm not doing that one. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, are, uh, I know I know you like to golf. Are the golf courses opened up yet? Yeah, the golf course have been open for about a month. I'm playing tomorrow, um, so that's yeah, so that's a bonus. Uh, hiking trails, nothing really closed here in Caramel. The beaches okay. were open. The the beaches were open. All the car- parks and hiking trails were open. Um, you know, the, you know, I mean, most of the big stores were open. Um, uh, it was just you know, mom and pop shops and you know those those kinds of things, which never really made much sense to me. And, Quite frankly, not shutting down the golf courses, really. Because, I mean, if you can't social distance on a golf course, then there's something wrong. That is true. That is <laughs> You're playing, true. Yeah. you know, it's not a golf course when it's mini putt. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're not like a group of 20 playing golf, right? You're like, if you guys are all together playing together, that's just a little awkward, too. So Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you know, it's, uh, I mean, you're never really hanging, you know, I mean, in a in a foursome, you know, if it's four guys, play, you know, that were competing, you wouldn't be hanging next to one another anyway. So, uh, you know, it's not much different, really. Uh, flags are in, but that's was the new rule that was set last year. So that was kind of odd and convenient at the same time. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's strange that that would be suddenly a thing, you know. Um, however, uh, I don't know if there's any kind of like, uh, anyway, I'm not going to go down that road. Uh, it just seems too, too strange and weird that that would happen. But uh, I think most of it was just to get more people around the golf courses quicker without the you know, flag in. But, you know, there are a lot of people that would prefer to have the flag out uh, more so than, than leaving it in. Uh, and I don't get that too often. You, you know, downhill putts. Yeah. Fast putts. Yeah. There's guys that would want it in sometimes to maybe stop it. But, man, I've seen the opposite happen where the ball hit, hits it on a fast putt going downhill and, you know, it careens off in a different direction. And, and it's in worse, worse position than it was if it had a, rim, you know, kind of rimmed around the cup. Uh, so, um, yeah, I'm kind of torn on that one myself as a player. Um, I prefer it out. So, now they're right now they're you know flag in and 
you know, if it's if it's really close, they're just calling it a two putt, you know, uh, just so you don't have to bend over and pick it up and that sort of stuff. So I'm sure that'll change uh, as soon as things open up a little bit more. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Those are like precautions, like, you know, temporary precautions that they put out just in case. No so. question. Yeah. 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 For sure. I think just making everybody happy, you know, and I think uh, that's the main thing. You know, we can't be all thinking about what we would like as individuals, um, you know, have to respect everybody else's choices and what they want to. So whether you agree or disagree with them. So it's, you know, it's just the way it is. Awesome. Now, I got a question to ask you about Trail Park Boys that a friend of mine wanted me to ask you. Mm. He wanted me to ask you the first time that we talked, and I completely forgot about it. So now he made sure I did it this time. He messaged me like three or four times in a row. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the red Corvette in the show, yeah. was that was that your car or was that a studio? Was that someone else's car? No, it was a friend of Rob Wells' uh, car. So, yeah. Yeah, no, it wasn't wasn't the studios at all. I think the only ones that the studio owned were the uh, you know late the Leahy's car and the and Ricky's. Yeah, um, yeah, I think those are the only two. I know that there was one there that black that black one that the Flappy Bird Brothers had, but I you know again that was probably somebody's that they borrowed. I can't imagine them buying that if they didn't have to. I think it was only used in a few episodes anyway. So, but the red Corvette, yeah, I mean that was around for a long time, twenty years, right? I mean, um, we're damn near it. Um, at least every time the character, my character, was around, the, it was in use. So, um, I don't know about anybody else uh, if anybody else got to use it. Um, but if they did, certainly wouldn't have been the same without Cyrus in it. So whether or not that was the case like i said i i don't, I don't watch myself gross on tv or or anything so um you know i i just i wouldn't know the answer to the to all that but i think it was always you i think it was always you in the car except for i think it was like one quick scene where i think sam drops off papers to barb or something he's in the car alone and then he leaves right. or whatever but besides that it's always been you you with someone else in the car. right yeah well, that would have maybe made sense uh, in that season that Sam and I were together in. If he was dropping off papers to Barb to have Cyrus's car, um, Cyrus could have lent him the car, I suppose. I mean, Sam did work for Kraft Dinner, which was fairly inexpensive. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> I love that one. Maybe he earned himself a ride in the car, you know. Yeah, quite First funny. time I heard that, I was eating craft dinner at the same time, which was kind of funny. I, I think I almost choked on it. I'm like, that's fucking funny. As if he yeah, just said that one. Yeah, that, uh, that would have been kind of funny, man. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you very much for coming for part two. Just yeah, shooting man. the shit. It was nice to see you again. I see you're doing awesome. good. Oh, it was a pleasure, so. man. Yeah, healthy as a horse. Couldn't be, couldn't, couldn't be much healthier. Just now, I just need to get out and, and uh, start doing my thing. But so, yeah. Looks like after the fifteenth, when the the uh, resorts open up, uh, things will for me will start getting back to kind of kind of normal again. You know, I'll be working, so um, yeah. But uh, okay. I got another couple okay. weeks to go, probably before it's you know, or and maybe almost a month before it's all kind of steady. You know, it's I'm not gonna it's not gonna be overnight. I don't think the airports are gonna open up the borders until the twenty second. So between Canada and the U.S., like, the, you know, where people will be able to. So, it, you know, it, it's, it's you know, we're looking at about a month probably before things kind of get to a point where, you know, you're kind of back to, you know, some kind of a regular work schedule. That's for sure. That's true. That's true. But, you know, it's it's summer, man. So, I mean, not that it's not summer in California a lot, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm enjoying myself, man. You know, I'm enjoying myself. So, it's all good. You'll have to come down to Montreal for a weekend or something and come hang I'd out. I'd like to do that, man, yeah. But my one of my best buddies is uh, it lives there. I used to live, we used to live together in, in uh, Moncton. He moved to Montreal about, uh, about a year ago now. So uh, I know that he's uh, coming out here, uh, I think, the end of August, 1st September, for uh, we're going to own a Vegas trip. So, um, uh, But, yeah, I'd, uh, the, you'll probably see me in Montreal uh, in the near future because uh, – 
Uh, I do love uh, the city and, uh, you know, uh, he and I always have a good time. So. Perfect. Well, again, thank you very much for your time yes, and, I'll t- and take care. All right, bro. We'll talk to you soon. Shadow of the 